On the eve of a national two-week lockdown, PM Tan Sri Mudin Yasin has unveiled Permakasa Plus, a 40 billion ringgit assistance package to help the people as the government continues to wage war against COVID-19. The package includes a 5 billion ringgit direct fiscal injection with three main goals, increasing the capacity of the healthcare system, continuing the Prihatin Raya agenda and supporting the business community. Here are some of the highlights of Permakasa Plus. An additional 1 billion to increase public health capacity alongside beefing up the national COVID-19 immunisation programme with the aim of almost doubling the daily doses to 150,000 in June. In order to ease the burden of the people, Pamakasa Plus includes a 2.4 billion ringgit allocation for Bantuan Prihatin Rakyat from end June, where households with a monthly income of up to 2,500 will receive an additional 500, while households with income between 2,500 and 1 and 5,000 will receive an additional 300. B40s, eligible SMEs not allowed to operate during the MCO, as well as for those who have lost their jobs, they will be given an automatic three-month loan moratorium or 50% payment reduction for a period of six months. This is expected to help 5 million borrowers and is worth 30 billion. Also included, an extension of the current wage subsidy program for one month worth 1.5 billion that is expected to benefit 2.5 million eligible employees and more than 200,000 employers. The government is also extending a couple of tax holidays. The Home Ownership Campaign Stamp Duty Exemption has been extended until December 31st, 2021. The sales tax exemption period for completely knocked down and completely built up passenger vehicles that was supposed to end in June has now been extended to December 31st, 2021. Finally, just like during MCO 1.0, ministers and deputy ministers will forego their salaries for three months and the money will instead be channeled to the Disaster Trust Fund for COVID-19 related expenditure. Serba Dynamic Holdings shares hit limit down at the opening bell, plunging 30% of 48 cent to 1 ringgit 13. It was Bursa Malaysia's top loser, closing at exactly the same price with over 28 million shares changing hands. Today was the first day the stock resumed trading after the group suspended the counter last Thursday and Friday following issues with its external auditors KPMG. KPMG had placed question marks over sales, trade payables and material on-site balances, which in total involved just over 3.5 billion ringgit. Group MD and CEO Dato Dr. Muhammad Abdul Karim Abdullah came out to say that the group had done nothing wrong and described KPMG as acting in an unfair and peculiar manner for going straight to the company's independent directors instead of briefing the management first. Abdul Karim is the largest shareholder of Serba Dynamic with a 26.93% stake in the company. Interestingly, the other counters related to Abdul Karim also sank today, with K-Power closing 18% lower at 23 cent and Sarawak Consolidated Industries dropping 21% to end the day at 90.5 cent. Meanwhile, Serba Dynamic also clarified that it had received a special notice from its non-independent and non-executive director, Dato Abdul Qadir Sahib, to remove KPMG as the group's external auditor. In a statement, the group highlighted that it was the right of any shareholder with more than a 10% stake to convene an AGM and that based on existing provisions, it is within Abdul Qadir's prerogative. Petronas's first quarter profit after tax more than doubled year on year to 9.3 billion thanks to a swing to impairment right back. This was achieved despite revenue for the quarter declining by 12% to 52.55 billion ringgit. This, as all segments, posted weaker performances led by gas and new energy as sales volume dropped and the ringgit strengthened. In the quarter under review, Petronas had booked a right back of 183 million as opposed to the 5.64 billion written off last year on improved crude oil prices. Also helping were improved gross profit margins as costs and administrative expenses came down. Net cash improved by 6% to $55 billion, while CAPEX fell 21% to $6.7 billion, which it attributed primarily to project delays thanks to the MCO. Across segments, the bottom line gain was due to the over threefold increase in the upstream segment, while the downstream segment returned to the 
Black. President and Group CEO Tunku Muhammad Taufik says that its most recent performance reflects its ongoing commitment to commercial and operational excellence as it continues on its journey to achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2050. He adds that the deliberate steps taken throughout 2020 have provided the group with a stronger foundation to better withstand volatile market conditions. CIMB Group Holdings posted its highest ever quarterly net profit in the first quarter, with earnings rising almost fivefold to 2.46 billion ringgit. In a boss filing, CIMB explains that part of the profit bump was due to a one off revaluation gain of 1.16 billion from the deconsolidation of TNG Digital, which was jointly founded by wholly owned subsidiary Touch and Go and Ant Group. Stripping that out, CIMB's core net profit still grew by 156% to 1.3 billion from 500 and 8 million revenue grew 44% to 5.96 billion for the quarter no dividend was declared as for some of the key metrics net interest income grew 8% year on year gross loans rose 0.7% and its casa showed 19.8% growth with its casa ratio strengthening to 42.3% as at end march from 41.3% at end december 2020 its common equity tier 1 ratio stood at 12.9% from 13.3% at end in December on risk-weighted assets optimization initiatives. Group CEO Dato Abdul Rahman said in a statement that the strong performance is an early indicator of recovery underpinned by the resilience of its underlying business. He adds that in addition to the positive momentum it sees across all its divisions, its digital businesses also registered healthy growth, with TNG Digital achieving 15.5 million registered users. AMMB Holdings dipped into the red for the fourth quarter of FY21, mainly due to one-off exceptional items totaling 4.77 billion ringgit. Of that, the biggest chunk was from the 1MDB settlement, which came to 2.83 billion. Hence, the bank posted a net loss of 4.69 billion compared with a net profit of 247.5 million that it reported a year ago. Revenue for the quarter dropped 11% to 1.97 billion ringgit. The settlement impairment charges and higher loan provisions resulted in a net loss of 3.83 billion for FY21 as a whole. Revenue shrank just under 10% to 8.41 billion from 9.32 billion a year before. In a statement, Group CEO Datuk Sulaiman Muhammad Tahir said Ambank had managed to record solid income growth of 7.7% and profit before provision growth of 14.2% to 2.4 billion ringgit. Sulaiman says this reflects the strength of its diverse franchise and effective cost management strategy. He adds that goodwill impairment is non-cash and non-recurring and doesn't impact its capital ratios. On its prospects, Suleiman says that COVID-19 continues to cause disruption and that the recent resurgence in new cases underscores the highly volatile circumstances. Suleiman says that Ambank is now able to go forward with a clean slate and will focus its efforts on strengthening its balance sheet, customer debt rehabilitation, maintaining higher liquidity buffers and improving cost efficiencies.